and welcome to Orion Today. I am Joe Johnson, and I am joined today by Joey Tysick. Hey, Joey. How's it going? First time on set, eh? I know. Usually I'm behind the glass, and I'm telling <laughs> you what to do. That's right. Now I get to sit down and just have some conversations. I'm excited. There you go. Uh, how was your weekend? Uh, we had the long Easter weekend. Do anything fun with family? Typically what we do is, you know, whenever you get with family, you eat a lot, so we do that. But our big event is the Easter egg dyeing contest. Now my family's super, super competitive. So everybody gets involved. They have a bunch of eggs and we just, everybody's come up with crazy things every year. It, Was that on used, Saturday night? Yeah, so okay. it, it used to be just dyeing eggs. You throw them in different colors and whoever's came out the coolest won. Now we got people that are using shaving cream and there's <laughs> lace and there's stickers and there's everything you could imagine we try to do. And the one rule is you just can't have anything prepared ahead of Saturday. So you can have all your stuff, you can do whatever research you want to do, and then you go into it and uh, make your egg. One little uh, trick that I learned years ago, and I, I do this every once in a while, is if you write with a white crayon mm -hmm. on the egg and dye it, yep. the wax keeps that part of the egg from getting dyed. The best part about that technique is you could play jokes on people and they don't uh, <laughs> don't know that you've written on the egg with a white crayon, so they dip it in the dye and it comes out with some message yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, we've fun. done a, we've done a lot of crazy things over the years. This year's novelty was uh, my mom and my wife bought these little stands that you put your egg in and they're on wheels and it spins the egg so you can put a marker and try to make Ooh. perfect circles. And the, the funny thing this year was everybody was intrigued by it, so they start doing it and you're making circles and it looks really nice as it's spinning. For some reason, when you stopped it spinning, <laughs> it, it didn't look, look as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a bunch of those, and um, usually whoever's not there is usually the judge. So this year it was my cousin and uh, her husband, and then uh, I believe my uncle also voted. And for the first time ever, my brother won yeah. in 20, probably 23 years, because he probably couldn't do it the first couple years. But <laughs> for 23 years, he had never won, and he finally won this year. What's the prize? Pride. <laughs> <laughs> pride. But in my family, that's Cash. huge. In my family, that's huge. So. <laughs> pride and dignity. Yeah, we had a large gathering on Sunday. My aunt in Westland hosted uh, Easter dinner, and they're Italian. Uh, that part of my family is Italian, so we had lasagna and mm -hmm. sausage and desserts and all <laughs> sorts of stuff. Oh, it was it was awesome, but uh, I was sluggish after that. Yeah. Um, but it was great having a large number of people together for Easter. It's something we hadn't done in a while, mm -hmm. especially over the past few years with COVID and everything. Right. So, uh, gosh, we must have had 15 people together. It was yeah. pretty cool. And then the nice thing, that Sunday was super great, and it kind of leads into... I saw the top down is today. Is yeah, today. yeah. Finally, spring-like weather is here, and uh, luckily, because of the nice weather, there was an Easter event in downtown Lake Orion, hosted mm -hmm. by the American Legion, and uh, it was a beautiful day, and uh, it was their biggest turnout ever in uh, Children's Park. Uh, Children's Park is right across the street from the American Legion, and so I didn't, I was not aware that they've hosted this event every year for a long time. Uh, this past uh, Saturday was the first time I actually attended this event. Uh, the Easter Bunny was there. They had an area for preschoolers so they wouldn't get trampled by the bigger <laughs> kids. And I was told after, after the eggs were all picked up, one of the uh, members came over to me and said, we, we timed it. It took about 90 seconds <laughs> for those kids to clear out every single Easter egg. And then the nice part is after they were done with the egg hunt and photo ops with the Easter Bunny, they were invited to come over to American Legion where they had a free pizza party oh, wow. for family and kids. So what a great event and uh, kudos to the American Legion for hosting the event. They do great things in the mm -hmm. community. Uh, a couple of years ago when there was the fire in downtown Lake Orion where a, a couple of people got displaced, they hosted a fundraiser at the American Legion to help them kind of get back on their feet because those people that lived in that building lost everything. Uh, so they really do a great job of uh, giving back to the community um, and supporting local veterans. Uh, they said that they added something like 16 new members over the past few months. So. Wow. Um, people are joining the American Legion and it's great that they have that presence right there in downtown Lake Orion and 
obviously word got out because uh, a lot of people showed up for the event. So it was yeah. really great to see. I was going to say, it's, it's cool to see just, again, I know it's already been a, quite a while, but it's great to see people getting out and about and yeah. just seeing groups of people again. Exactly. Yeah, it's been kind of slow going, but mm -hmm. I think people are starting to look for things to do. Right. I went to a karaoke event a couple of weeks ago and it was packed and people were having fun and getting up there singing. So things are slowly getting back to hopefully uh, pre-COVID norms. So, right. Yeah. Um, this Friday is a big uh, kind of a milestone. Uh, this Friday is the 111th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. Wow. Now, I know it's kind of a morbid thing to talk yeah. about, but whenever April rolls around, people start talking about it. You might start seeing the movie playing a lot on cable TV. I've been uh, uh, an aficionado of the Titanic long before the movie. And a couple of years ago, I was in Las Vegas with family and I was surprised to find out that at the Luxor, which is shaped like a giant pyramid, mm -hmm. uh, they have a Titanic artifact display that is just an ongoing exhibit. And so I went to go check it out. And it was really cool seeing artifacts, you know, like cups and dishes and pieces and clothing and stuff like that. But imagine my shock when I turn a corner and enter this room and there was the big piece of yeah. the Titanic on display. And I remember seeing a documentary about it, how they tried to raise it from the ocean floor. And their first attempt, the storm came in mm -hmm. and caused rough waves and the cables broke and it sank all the way back down to the ocean floor. A couple years later, they tried it again, they brought it up. And now you can see it on exhibit at the Luxor and it'll take your breath away when you see it, this massive piece of the Titanic. It's really incredible yeah, to see. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how it's been that long. They were able to go get something that's been underwater for a while before they yeah. were even able to get it and be able to preserve it that long. Yeah, and I I guess that particular piece had broken away from the wreckage, so it, it was sitting by itself uh, on the sea floor. And I'm okay with them bringing it up because if it was just allowed to sit there, eventually it would just turn to, right. to rust and just decompose on the bottom there. And that's pretty much what's gonna happen to the bulk of the Titanic because yeah. it's just gonna be a big, pile of rust. So personally, I feel it's okay to bring things up from the seafloor. I know some people call it grave robbing, but mm -hmm. I like being able to see the artifacts and stuff that they've brought up. I have some replicas at home, some little, you know, cup and saucer and uh, whistle and some replicas from the movie too. And uh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big uh, fan of the history of it. It's such, you couldn't, well, I would say you can't write that kind of a story, but yeah. apparently somebody did. <laughs> right. Somebody wrote a story about a luxury liner hitting an iceberg and sinking years before the Titanic incident mm -hmm. happened. So that's pretty crazy, but uh, it's just a wild story. So this Friday, maybe pop in the movie and watch Titanic and uh, think about uh, that incident that happened all those years ago. You want to know, not a great story, but uh, the first time I ever saw that movie, I was in fourth grade at a friend's birthday party. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> One of those ones, pizza party, all that stuff. And then it gets to about midnight and everybody's like, what do we do now? And somebody's like, we should watch the Titanic. It's rated R. <laughs> so we started watching the movie. Everybody fell asleep except for me and my one buddy. And we stayed up the whole three oh. hours or whatever and watched the whole movie. Last year was the 25th anniversary of the movie Titanic. Mm. And I remember seeing it in the theater. Actually, I saw it four times, if you can believe it. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was watching it with a friend. And as the credits rolled, I turned to him and said, that's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. <laughs> it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Still one of my all-time favorite movies. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we're going to throw it to um, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, when uh, new business opens up here in Lake Orion, they usually welcome them to the community with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, sometimes the ribbon cutting ceremony comes a little later. In the case of this particular business, um, when they tried opening their doors, it was March 2020. Wow. Bad timing <laughs> on their part. And, but they got through it. Their business is thriving. So even though the ribbon cutting ceremony is coming a little late, um, they managed to pull it off. And here's a brand new business here in Lake Orion.
On the afternoon of Thursday, April 7th, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce and other dignitaries gathered at Beyond Mindful Counseling and Wellness on Clarkston Road near M24 to help them celebrate their official grand opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. This is really great. I was really surprised. I, I they kept handing those certificates and I was like, oh my God, I, I didn't expect all that. So it's been really nice. Um, I think we live in a great community and there's a lot of community support here. Lake Orion resident Rochelle Campbell started out as a teacher before opening up her own private practice. Unfortunately, her grand opening took place in March of 2020, just as the COVID pandemic was getting underway. Today, her business is thriving, and she and her staff offer counseling and treatment to heal the mind, body, and spirit. We, we believe that to heal, you need to have all aspects, the mind, body, spirit, um, kind of in, I guess, flow with each other. So um, that's, that's what our focus is here. Um, I do the mental health part. I also am an energy healer. Um, I do a modality called the body code. Um, and so, yeah, I've been compass some other people um, that have kind of collaborated with me um, to to offer all the different types of healings for mind, body, and spirit. Whether you're experiencing mental health challenges or physical ailments, Campbell encourages you to reach out and set up a consultation to determine the correct course of action. Most people come to me um, when they are having some, you know, depression, anxiety, things like that, which has been huge since COVID. Um, but yes, physical pain, you know, one of our yoga therapists works specifically with, with people with um, physical pain. A lot of times physical pain is caused from emotions and things that we hold into our, in our, in our body. So, um, yeah, I mean, health, just want to feel better and healthy. We have a registered dietitian that is a holistic nutritionist as well. We have an herbalist. Um, they help people do more like, um, I guess, instead of like pharmaceuticals, they'll also help you find natural remedies to, to heal. For more information, you can call 248-978-5625 or visit beyondmindfulcounselingandwellness.com. You can also find them on Facebook. In Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. All right, welcome to the community, Beyond Mindful. Uh, we are now joined by Holly Nicosia from the Orion Arts Center. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's the director over at the Arts Center. Welcome. Thanks, Joe. When did you uh, officially become director at the Arts Center? It was November this year, right before the holiday market. That was oh, my okay. first big to do for the art center. Yeah, so. <laughs> so how are you liking it? How, how I you love like it. I really, it? really like it. It's a good mix of everything, my past experience and advertising and art and community relations. And it's it's probably my favorite job I've had so far. So oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's such a, a great uh, resource to have here in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, not a lot of communities have their very own art center. and. Here we have this great resource, not only for exhibit space, but mm -hmm. classes and all that stuff. Kind of talk about mm -hmm. in a nutshell what the Art Center offers to the community. I say that a lot too, about not every community has an art center like this, but um, we do have a lot of um, exhibitions that happen throughout the year where local artists can put their work up. And we always have um, opening nights where they come out and you've joined us a few times where they get to showcase their, their work. And um, most of those shows are award shows where they're winning money for, for entering. And we also have our pottery studio and our painting studio, which have grown significantly since the pandemic um, is kind of in the rear view. Um, our pottery studio, I think we have about 75 members now. Um, oh. And we're bringing people in from Clarkson and Rochester, Oxford. It's not just the Lake Orion community. It's something that there's a need throughout this area for a, a pottery studio. So um, that's really growing. And um, we're very proud of the work we've done there over the past couple of years. That's great. Is that over mm -hmm. at Moose Tree? Yep. That's Talk old about that relationship <laughs> you have with the Moose Tree Preserve. Um, it's the old Moose Tree Preserve at Weber Elementary. And it's great. I mean, the trails are still there. We have people that use the trails and come up and kind of just find us in the pottery studio, not expecting to have an art studio there. But 
Um, you know, the students in the district still have an opportunity to use the trails and then we open our doors to them to, you know, use as a, a meeting point and restrooms and it's still part of the school district and, I, you know, going forward it will always be part of the school district's building, but we have a great relationship with them and it's fun having the kids come in and out and um, the teachers, they all were, most of them were students that utilized it when they were um, in school, so it's fun to see them come back and use it with their students. I haven't been there in a couple of years. Is there still a lot of wild animals on display? Nope. We've, we've oh, you got rid of the we've taxidermy? We've slowly gotten rid of the, the moose and the deer, <laughs> and uh, um, it's great for uh, artistic inspiration for, you know, a couple years, but there's only so many deer you can paint. So, yeah, no, those have slowly, we've donated a lot of it to nature centers, oh, and um, we try to find groups that we can give this stuff to. So I recently went into the basement of the Moose Tree Preserve, and there are about 200 fish tanks there that mm. used to house the animals. And I'm like, what do we do with all these wow. fish tanks? So yeah, we're kind of sourcing those out now too. All right, so. I might have to pay a visit. <laughs> we have fish tanks. <laughs> <laughs> Put those to use. Yeah. Uh, so we have a deadline quickly mm -hmm. approaching at the end of this week. The Joan Brace mm -hmm. Scholarship was just named after one of the original founders of the Orient Arts Center. Uh, what, what year was the center founded? Like 1976? Something. Nine, I believe. Nine? I think so. officially it was 81, but it started in, in 79. Okay, yeah. yeah. So Joan Brace is one of the, uh, the founding members of the Arts Center. Mm -hmm. The scholarship is named in her honor. Talk about how the scholarship works. How do students uh, submit work to be considered for the scholarship? Yeah, yep. So this is our scholarship show, and we actually have three awards this year. It's the Joan Brace Scholarship, the Syrowski Award, and the Daryl Enneken Award. So there's three different categories or three awards you can win at this show and it's open to any graduating senior that will be attending college in the fall um, that will pursue art in any form of art teacher or marketing with like a graphic design background any type of um, or a BFA any art degree um, and you can go on our website and there's a tab on there for Joan Brace Award and you can um, submit your work there there's a questionnaire that you fill out to be accepted into the show um, and then um, we'll set up a time for you to drop off your art and your um, welcome to come to the opening exhibition which is ap actually April 26. Right. What so kind of media is accepted? All media, oh, all wow. media forms, yep, yep. We really want to um, reach out to all um, graduating seniors in the area, so um, all the surrounding communities of Clarkson and Oxford have submitted work too. So, so with the three different awards, mm -hmm. Does each award look at something specific or like do they have to meet certain criteria for each award or how, how is it determined who the winners are? So there's a judging rubric with most of our shows um, and we depend on our judges to kind of come up with the, their, their criteria on it, um, but each one has a different um, criteria because there are different monetary values. Um, so, um, but our judges have most of that planned out. So the deadline is this Friday, the 17th. Yep. Is, is there a time? Is it the end of the day, that sort of thing? Midnight. We'll say midnight. Midnight <laughs> yes. on Friday. Yes. So if you're a graduating high school student uh, who's going to pursue a uh, post-high school career in, in mm -hmm. arts, uh, submit your work. Is there a, a cap of how many pieces can be submitted? You can submit up to three pieces. Three pieces. Yep. So, and they bring those to the Art Center? Yep, they'll bring them and it'll be open for the exhibition on the 26th and it runs until May 20th. So we'll have different dates throughout the month where people can come in and, and view the art. Okay, mm -hmm. and on the 26th uh, six, is that when they're gonna announce who won yep, what? exactly. That's exciting. Yeah. I'll be there. All right, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> Yeah. And this is the first time we've brought it back since the pandemic, so we're excited oh, just to right. welcome. I know I've told you in the past that student work is really something we're passionate about and yeah. just getting the young artists involved in the community and being able to showcase their talents. Yeah, just recently we had the, the middle school mm -hmm. show, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. And the, co the comment that I heard more than anything else is people were, adults were looking at this work going, these kids are more talented than anything I can do. It's really impressive to see the level of talent there. Yeah, definitely. When I was, the teachers were bringing it in, I was thinking like, all right, are these are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So it, yeah. it's it's impressive that the art programs that Lake Orion has in their school are just, you know, top notch. Yeah, yeah, great teachers over mm -hmm. there. 
Um, coming up soon, we got beautiful weather out there, so thoughts turn toward the flower and art fair, or this year, the art and flower fair. <laughs> um, talk about that. I'm, I'm kind of excited that that's coming back again this year. Yeah, so we're super excited for it, too. We're going to have close to 100 vendors, um, and we're really amping up our children's um, programming this year to get a lot of the younger families to come out. We have two different nature centers that are going to have um, children's programming throughout the weekend. Um, we have live artist demonstrations this year. We're going to have a wood carver and a painter and potters that you can actually see them doing their work during uh, during the weekend. Um, and of course, we'll have flowers and art there. We have a beer tent Saturday night that we're going to have live music. Um, and to kick it all off, we have a Friday night mystery art stroll too. So. Oh, wow. Describe mm -hmm. that. How does that work? So the Mystery Art Stroll, um, we're really excited about this. Last year was the first year we did it, and there's 10 businesses in downtown Lake Orion that will feature local artists. Um, their work will be there. And as the guests go around from business to business, they are figuring out clues on the artwork. And um, at the end of the scavenger hunt, we're, everyone's going to meet over at um, MSB uh, Fitness Studio, the rooftop where they have the dragon mural painted yeah, on the building, yeah, really and we're going to have a reception there. Um, you'll hand in your clue sheet, and we're going to have um, cocktails and uh, appetizers, live music there. There's going to be a henna artist and giveaways. We have raffles for bikes from MSB, um, and that's uh, a ticketed event. That's $50 to come and do that, and that all the benefits, um, all that goes to benefit the Art Center. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, the uh, art fair, that the, the money is raised through what, vendor fees primarily? Yeah, bas basically that, and then the beer tent um, oh, yeah. that, that sells from that. But yeah, it's mostly the vendors. But residents are free to stroll the uh, streets of, of downtown Lake Of right? course, and of course we have our sponsors too that are sponsoring oh, <laughs> sponsoring the event. We get, um, are able to put it on through that. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the biggest fundraisers yeah. of the year. Obviously, the really big <laughs> one is later in the summer. Yeah. The uh, Dragon on the Lake. Uh, you could talk about that a little bit, but mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll have you back oh, yeah. before uh, that rolls around. But what would you say the difference is between the art fair and Dragon on the Lake? Well, this is, we always say this is like our warm up, getting us ready, you know, getting the streets ready with the vendors. The difference are, is the dragon boat racing, mm -hmm. obviously, <laughs> and then the, um, we have three nights of music for Dragon on the Lake. It's just a bigger community event, but um, we like to have a, a warm up to get to that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. yeah, you're looking for something to do, take advantage of this warm weather, get mm -hmm. out there. Uh, I'm sure the Art Center will be open during the Flower Fair, or will it? It should be, yeah, and we will have um, another exhibition during that time. Mm -hmm. Or uh, the, I'm sorry, the Joan Brace will still be going up until that weekend. So uh, you'll be able to weekend, see student right. work at that point. Yeah, it's really amazing to see the, the grounds over there by the Art Center evolve. Of course, mm -hmm. you've got the beautiful walking bridge that takes people over to Paint Creek Trail. But mm -hmm. I love the uh, the butterfly art sculpture that's out in front of the Art Center. That's really something to see. What a great photo opportunity. It's really great. Yeah. Yep, and we actually brought over the dragon. I don't know if you've noticed it in the mm -hmm. past. It was in the back of the Art Center. And then during ice golf this year, we brought it into the front. And that's also a good little photo op. And yeah. um, people really like that. Yeah, so if you haven't been, go check out yeah. the Art Center. If someone wants more information, how do they go about finding out information about the Art Center? Our website, orionartcenter.org, we actually have a brand new website. The past few weeks it's launched, so um, all of our classes are on there. Um, you're able to sign up for our newsletters, um, to be a sponsor, to be a volunteer, to become a member. It's all right there, and we ha rely heavily on volunteers, so that's a good spot to sign up and let us know your interest if you want to come help us out with any of the events or even groundskeeping at the Art Center. We have volunteers for everything. After the uh, Joan Brace exhibit, do you have more exhibits planned throughout the rest of the year that artists from the community can submit their work in? We do. We don't have a schedule posted yet. Um, we kind of take a break after um, Art and Flower to get ready for Dragon on the Lake, and then in the fall we'll kick off with uh, another series of um, shows, which I think the next one will be Portraits and Pottery, which is oh, always a, a really one, yeah, yeah. It's a fun one to enter. Yeah. I've always thought about submitting, you have a, a, a photography show, <laughs> or at least the Art Center has in the past, and I've always thought about submitting something, and I never do, and one of these days I'm going to submit something, uh, a show at the exhibit, that'll be fun. You should, it's a really fun time. It's fun to get your friends and family to come out and like see on the wall, this is me with my name, and we have artists that enter of all skill levels too. Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, 
you know, it doesn't have to be your fine art major. He, you know, people have talents and it's good to showcase them at every level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you submit something, if there's cash prizes, yeah. right? Yes. That's exciting. There is. So, all right. Anything we're missing? Anything else you want to talk about that's happening at the Art Center? Um, I, you know, I think we, we cover a lot. We're very busy <laughs> right yeah. now. Um, one of the newer things we have are um, our scout uh, troops, um, field trips, where the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts or the Cubs can come out and do art projects to earn their badges. And that's on the website, too. That's really picking up steam and becoming a popular um, uh, program at the Art Center. With the Nature Center and the Scouts, it's just a natural good place to have these events. And that's a perfect mm -hmm. segue because uh, we have a, a scouting organization that comes here to this studio at ON TV. Uh, they completed their first season of shows uh, in December, and now they just kicked off their new season of shows with their first episode of the year. And here's a little snippet from their show uh, that uh, talks about uh, a female Eagle Scout, which doesn't happen very often. So, uh, Holly, thanks for joining us. Thanks yeah. for talking about the Art Center. I'm sure I'll see you soon. And uh, check out this, uh, this segment from Scouting on Air. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. This afternoon, we have the honor of recognizing Michaela for her accomplishment of the rank of Eagle Scout, but also her contributions to Troop 366 as a founding member. Congratulations, Michaela. The Eagle Scout Court of Honor is an occasion for pride and joy as well as a time for serious reflection. The Eagle is the highest recognition a scout can achieve and is an honor recognized throughout the world. To earn the highest rank in scouting, a scout spends a great deal of time living and learning in the outdoors, working on advancement, serving their community, and gaining leadership skills. And while many scouts begin this journey, only a small percentage receive this high honor. To earn the highest ranking in scouting, a scout must spend a great deal of time and effort. When a youth becomes a scout, there is something within them that we call the spirit of scouting. Because the spirit of scouting embodies the principles of the scout oath and law, it becomes a shining beacon of inspiration. Alone, this light may seem feeble, but when multiplied by more than three and a half million youth in the scouting around the world, it is powerful indeed. After a youth enters scouting, the scout law that they promise to obey begins to guide their life. One by one, using the flame from the spirit of scouting, we shall light the symbols for each part of the scout law. To me, taking care of the environment is what we are called to do. It was very important to me that I would be able to teach children about why they should do this and how they can do it. So for my project, I worked with the Mid-Michigan Children's Museum in Saginaw to build an exhibit on the seven, trans seven principles of Leave No Trace, the outdoor code, and solar energy. I, I decided that I wanted to do something that would last and that could be seen by children in the, our community because honestly, the future of our world depends on these children and if we don't teach them how to take care of it, it's not gonna be here for their children. So I posted on Facebook asking if anybody made quilts. I spoke up like I normally do before I think about it and said, I do. So Michaela, this is for you. I wasn't sure I could take this on and it's been quite the journey for myself to get this done. After talking to your mom, oh my gosh, talking to her mom all the time, I'm pretty sure that I not only confused myself, but confused her. And I knew that I wanted to tell a story. I want to tell a story that you had a huge goal of going to all the 50 states and earning 
at least one badge, then seeing your progress from Cub Scouts to Boy Scouts, I knew I wanted to tell this story. I wanted to not just show your trail to Eagle, but the story of your badges. It took me many changes, many layouts, many frustration and some tears, but I think I came up with what I wanted. It actually starts in the top corner, and it starts with her Cub Scouts, and then it's all of her Eagle, all of her Boy Scout ranks, and on the other side is her states and the badges that she earned in those states. This quilt, Michaela has not only been a labor of love, but along the way I learned a lot more about you and about Boy Scouts. I hope that when I'm gone, that you will remember your aunt that made this quilt that she loved you, and only one the best for you. Gosh, darling, congratulations, honey. So congratulations to Michaela on her Eagle Scout accomplishment. She's one of the crew members that comes in here and does the Scouting On Air show here in the studio. They do such a great job. Yeah. They put their heart and soul in it, and they've been inspiring uh, scout groups from all over Michigan, mm -hmm. maybe even the country, to follow in their footsteps and do something similar. Um, they do just a fantastic job. And we've submitted one of their episodes for a national award. We won't find out for probably a month or so if they won, but uh, they did a uh, live Zoom interview uh, with a scout who was in Poland and he was hosting a uh, refugee Ukrainian family. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't impressive enough, I was amazed when uh, the host started speaking in Russian, I think mm -hmm. it was, to the family, and they had a conversation in, in yeah. Russia, or in Russian, and uh, his name is Ivan, and I, I was just blown away. Yeah, um, some of the stuff they do is, is so cool. Even last week, they were in, they were in the studio filming sessions, and then they went outside running around doing different, yeah. uh, I think they were doing another cooking segment type thing. and. Yeah, what they do has been really cool to watch. And they do it all themselves. Like, yeah. They're so self-sufficient, which is yeah. cool to see. And they also took part in our uh, Wildwood Film Festival back in the fall. So uh, so they're expanding yeah. beyond just doing their show. But they, they do a really great job. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, speaking of which, uh, this uh, Friday is our ONTV Volunteer Appreciation Banquet. And it's great to have it back because, uh, obviously, f for reasons we all know, we haven't had it the last few years. I think the one year we did it virtually, didn't we? Did yeah, we, we did some one of a celebration and put together a little video, yeah. Yeah, so this will be the first year in a couple of years, what, three years, that uh, that we're going to get everybody together in person. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be holding it over at uh, Palazzo del Bacci on uh, Lapeer Road. So we're going to have some great food and play some bocce ball and have yeah. a fun, uh, casual get-together with our valuable volunteers here mm -hmm. at Owen TV. Um, it's, it's such a small token on our part to thank our volunteers and producers for doing what they do, but um, it's nice to be able to give them a, a special night and yeah. honor them and celebrate them. So. Right, and just to have everybody get together all in one place, because not all the volunteers, they're all in at different times. So yeah. People are able to meet each other, which is cool, and I mean, just hang out and have some fun. Yeah, yeah, and of course there's always that usual gang of suspects who we count on all the time to help us out around here, but uh, we're so grateful to our volunteers and producers for uh, making Owen TV what it is today. Um, do you have, uh, I know we're out there doing sports, you rely on volunteers and students to help you do sports. What do you got coming up uh, with the spring sports season kicking off? Well, tonight I got to go film soccer, <laughs> and then uh, lacrosse is coming up on Thursday. That'll be a, a student-run shoot with myself taking the truck down to the football field, and then uh, I think Ian's going to run out and cover some track. It doesn't seem like we're going to be able to get to track this year. They already had to cancel one of their first meets. Spring is always a mess with sports because <laughs> of is. the weather. It's unpredictable, um, yeah. We get days like today, or we get muddy, rainy, cruddy weather. Um, so it's all over the place, but most of the time running with students. I do have an intern this year um, That's gonna help cover a lot of extra stuff. He's already shot water polo, which I've never even wow. shot water polo before <laughs> um, Because just haven't had time um, So yeah, it'll be cool, but 
the thing that we really need volunteers for, I would say, is concerts. Yeah. And those, crazy enough, are right around the corner. Even yeah. Though it doesn't feel like it, but they're they're creeping up on us. There is no shortage of entertainment and concerts in the community, and I'm sure there's going to be a busy, busy year. Uh, in at the Wildwood Pavilion in Orient Township, uh, they have weekly concerts on what Tuesday. Uh, that yes. will be starting. We don't have the exact start time yet, but I think it's going to be in June or late June. Something like that. And then over in the village uh, at the gazebo, they have uh, LO Live with uh, bands playing there. And 20 Front Street uh, usually does the booking for that, and they bring in some really amazing talent. Yeah. And if weather doesn't cooperate, those concerts move into 20 Front Street, which is a beautiful, beautiful venue for live music. Yeah. If, if you've never been, you got to go. And again, it's where people are getting in big groups. And the showings last year, there was a ton of people showing up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the talent is better and better every year. I've been doing it now for so many years that like, I love coming and watching the concerts because they're just they're enjoyable to watch. They are, they are, and I'm kind of grateful that uh, sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm kind of forced to be there to record it, but then I find myself really enjoying it when mm -hmm. I'm there. Uh, so to kind of get you in that concert frame of mind, we have a performance from uh, a group, uh, or a, a performer, B. Taylor, uh, who performed at LO, uh, LO Live last year. So let's take a look at this uh, performance by B. Taylor in Children's Park. That was B. Taylor and Friends over at the Gazebo and Children's Park. 
Man, on, on a beautiful spring or summer evening uh, in the park, I, I, nothing better than live music. And they got that brand new uh, playground structure that was just constructed last year for the mm -hmm. kids to go off and have fun while the parents can enjoy the music performances. But uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty of performances this year. Uh, just about everything that took place last year we recorded. And uh, as you saw at the end of that video clip, they're all on YouTube, so you can watch them on demand. Uh, they're airing on our channel, and we will be back again this year recording all of those performances at Wildwood and at the Gazebo and Children's Park. So, um, yeah, great, great night out. And not too far from the Gazebo is, is Cookies and Cream, so you can get some ice cream with the all family. All the restaurants and, downtown. Yeah, and go shopping and walk around downtown. Downtown Lake Orion, man, you know, being a Lake Orion, longtime Lake Orion resident, nothing makes me happier than seeing foot traffic in downtown Lake Orion mm -hmm. and seeing people walking and shopping and eating and there's desserts and all kinds of stuff to do in yeah. downtown Lake Orion. It's really great to see downtown Lake Orion really thriving and bustling mm -hmm. right now. I don't think there's any vacancies that I'm aware of. I think there might be one one storefront next to Sagebrush Cantina that looks like it's currently undergoing some renovation. So it mm -hmm. looks like something's going to be moving in there real soon. Yeah. But, and there's always yeah. new things coming in too that we know with the DDA, they're trying to get the lumber yard project to get moving and all that. So Yeah, they want to extend downtown Lake Orion out onto Lapeer Road where the lumber yard is right now. So uh, we're waiting to see how that's going to play out, how that's going to go. And uh, it's really kind of exciting to see the changes that are going to be taking place in downtown Lake Orion. Yeah. So. Yeah. So our next segment is uh, produced by LOAM. Those are the students over at the high school who do the uh, daily announcements over there and uh, the TPW group, the uh, television production workshop. They're doing some great things over there. Roger Smith, who's the teacher over at the high school, he used to be my intern here <laughs> at ONTV. And uh, he was our sports guy on the newscast before he went away to Michigan State and uh, their former video production teacher over there, Brett Saunders, had retired and Roger was pretty much handpicked to replace him over at the high school as a video production teacher and they're doing great things over there. Uh, there's hardly any wall space anymore because awards and plaques are covering pretty much every square inch of their <laughs> their walls. Uh, yep. It's really amazing what they're doing and you work with them on a yeah. regular basis. And I feel like the group of kids that they get each and every year just keeps get, getting better and better. Um, this past year has been one of the best groups. I don't like to pick favorites, but it's been one <laughs> of the best best groups that they've had in a while where basically top to bottom they are all superstars. Boy, that's and great to won see. tons of awards already and it's crazy and I love seeing, like now I've gotten to the point where I'm old enough <laughs> where I get to see where some of these kids have gone. Yeah. And I know uh, uh, one kid that graduated a couple years ago is now, uh, he's doing missions and things over in Brazil. Wow. And I still talk to him and do some stuff. And then uh, a kid that graduated just last year, um, he's doing collegiate sports with uh, University of Oklahoma. Oh, wow. And he's been doing, he's been posting pictures of him doing volleyball and baseball. And I think he even did a basketball game. and. Yeah, it's crazy, some yeah. of the stuff they're doing. It's, it's great that we can, in a small way, help these students move on to bigger and better things and follow their passion. So uh, this next segment is uh, produced by the LOAM group uh, to talk about distracted driving, uh, which is a big issue right now. So let's take a look at that. As we move towards springtime, more and more young drivers will be on the road. With that comes the risk of distracted driving. Anthony Schulte brings us the story. Recently, there has been a focus on keeping the students of LOHS safe on the roadways. However, road safety is always a concern. One, you could kill somebody. Um, I actually know uh, a family member that was killed from somebody that was texting and driving. So it's very real, very dangerous. Um, other things that could happen, you could just get into a regular accident, which costs you thousands of, uh, thousands of dollars to fix your car. Well, there's three different factors. There's cognitive, visual, and physically being distracted. Uh, one, your eyes just being taken off the roadway. Two, somebody distracting you in the car. 
and three, maybe you take your hands off of the wheel. There are also many legal ramifications that come with distracted driving. There's several, actually, uh, laws that have been written for distracted driving. One, uh, we all know the texting laws against it, uh, no matter what your age. It's a $100 fine for the first offense, $200 fine for your second and subsequent offense. There's also careless driving. So if you're texting and maybe swerving in and out of your lane, that's six points on your license on top of a fine, which I believe is about $240. So not only will your, you have to pay that fine, you will also, your insurance will also go up. There's also causing a death while driving a vehicle. Now, uh, if you make a moving violation and then kill somebody, that is actually a crime. You'll be charged with a misdemeanor, and there will be fines and possibly jail time. Stay safe on the road, LO. For WDBC, I'm Anthony Schulte. You know, my, uh, my TikTok feed and my uh, Facebook video feed is full of these dash cam videos. And you, you watch these videos and go, what are these people thinking? And mm -hmm. most of them look to be just obviously distracted driving because they're not even hitting their brakes. Yeah. Like you'll see traffic coming to a stop on a freeway for whatever reason, and someone will just plow into the back of that just mm -hmm. without ever applying the brake and you know that their eyes are off the road that they're looking at their phone yeah it's terrible to see because it, it i felt like at first it was a lot of young people and everybody's like oh they're young they're learning and i see everybody okay. from every age group texting or on their phones even it's it's spooky to be honest you know, a lot of uh, modern cars today, they just hook up with Bluetooth to mm -hmm. your phone. So you don't really have to be looking at your phone. You can kind of, if you're going to have a conversation, you can just kind of plug them in and, and still keep your eyes on the road. So there's really no excuse to be staring at your phone while mm -hmm. you're driving nowadays. It's, yeah. You know, we had that incident on M24. They're still looking for the, uh, the perpetrator, but someone had veered off of M24, took out a sign, which went airborne and hit the driver behind them, which the, the driver ended up dying from the injuries, mm -hmm. and they still haven't found the person who took out the sign. Um, but how do you explain that? How do you explain veering off the road and hitting the sign had to have been looking at their phone? Yeah. That's the only explanation that makes sense. Yeah, and the problem is you see it almost every day. I'll be either coming into work or leaving work, and you see somebody just kind of go off the edge. <laughs> and, you know, it, yeah. at least they're going off to the right, but when they cross that center line, it, it gets scary. Yeah, yeah, so uh, keep your eyes on the road, people. Um, again, with beautiful weather uh, arriving here in this area, oh, it just makes me so happy. And I know uh, Orient Township is really gearing up for a fun season of events and activities and things like that. Just makes you want to go on a run, doesn't it? It does. Well, maybe not me personally. I would probably not reach the finish line, but uh, I know a lot of runners out there are looking forward to the 5Ks that are taking place. I mean, really, they don't need good weather. They run in all kinds yeah. of weather, but uh, Orient Township is gearing up for their very popular Dragon Dash, which starts and ends right out front of this building, the Orient Center. Uh, so if you're a runner, walker, want to get some exercise, uh, enjoy this beautiful weather and help support Orient Township Parks and Rec, uh, you can take part in the annual Dragon Dash. Here's a little promo I put together. Runners and walkers of all ages are invited to come out to the 2023 Dragon Dash 5K on Sunday, May 21st. Check-in opens at 7.30 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. The Dragon Dash begins and ends at the Orient Center with participants heading out on the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park and back again. All participants will receive a medal as they cross the finish line. For more information, call 248 3910 extension 3500 or visit orionparks.com. You know, even though I, I'm shooting video of the event, I still get a little bit of a workout because <laughs> um, at the starting line, when they say go, then I get out onto the trail to try and capture 
the runners going by, and then I have to rush back to the finish line to get people coming across the finish line. So it's uh, I, I get a yeah. little uh, beat up that day, and uh, it, it's a little bit of a workout, but it's it's fun being out there, especially when the weather is nice. Yeah, I decided to give up 5Ks a long time ago. Yeah? <laughs> I've only ever run in two. Um, <laughs> we used to do a uh, cancer awareness, uh, and we did a 5K, and then um, our local library in Ortonville did a 5k and I my friends convinced me to do it once they're all runners and I after that I said I'm good <laughs> I'm, I'm good I don't need to do any more 5k's I think what I'm going to try and do this year is uh, get that bike back out and uh, head out on Pink, Pink Creek Trail maybe head out to Rochester and back uh, just to get some activity it's such a beautiful resource and I really need to take advantage of yeah. that more often one of the big things for me this time of year is uh, disc golfing Oh, yeah. uh, I picked it up back in high school with a bunch of buddies. Never even heard of the sport before. And uh, we went over to Seymour Lake Park in Oxford and uh, started playing. And ever since, I've been watching the uh, kind of the scene grow and there's more and more disc golfers. And now there's courses in Lake Orion. There's the one yeah. course at Camp Agawam yeah. that I actually want to try maybe this summer at some point. But that's always a fun one because it's not too grueling, but you're getting your walk in and stuff like that. And that's yeah. always what I look forward to in this weather. Yeah, so there's uh, no shortage of things to do this summer, this spring. Uh, like I said, Orient Township has some events coming up, and uh, Becky's going to touch on some of those upcoming events on uh, this week's Quick Hits. Spring has arrived, and the Orient Center Walking Club is looking for new members. The club meets every Wednesday and Friday at 10 a.m. in the Orient Center lobby. Regular walking can have many health benefits, like lowering your risk of high blood pressure, heart disease, and diabetes. Join the Puddle Jumpers this Friday at Independence Oaks beginning at 10.30. Children ages 3 through 6 will enjoy nature fun as they increase their love for the great outdoors. April's topic is amphibians. Register by calling 248-858-0916. On Friday, the Orient Center will be hosting Senior Social Hour from 11 a.m. to noon. Seniors meet on the second and fourth Fridays of each month for a chance to get out and socialize. Each week will feature a different topic of conversation so that participants can enjoy the company of other seniors. Don't miss the Dungeons and Dragons party at the library this Saturday from noon to 4.30. Bring your fellow D&D campaign to the library for an afternoon of role playing. Snacks and drinks will be provided. For more information, visit orientlibrary.org. The Oakland County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center is providing free rabies shots with the purchase of a dog license. No appointment is needed. Just bring a dog on any Tuesday of the month between the hours of 9 a.m. and noon. The shelter is located at 1200 North Telegraph Road in Pontiac. It's going to feel a lot like summer this week. Wednesday's forecast is calling for sunny skies with a high of 79 and low 57. Mostly sunny on Thursday with a high of 79 and low 54. Partly cloudy on Friday with a high of 77 and low 56. Evening showers roll in on Saturday with a high of 74 and low 52. And showers continue on Sunday for the high 62 and low 43. Well, that's it for this week's Zone TV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. I saw one of the events on the uh, Quick Hits was the Dungeons & Dragons event at the library. Have you seen the new movie yet? No. No? I've heard good <laughs> things. I haven't made it out to see it yet, but uh, yeah. people seem to be liking it. As big of a nerd as I am, <laughs> I draw the line at Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and I only kid, I have a ton of friends that love the game and uh, think it's really fun, but um, it's just never something that I've really gotten into. I would probably like it. That's probably why I don't do it, is probably I would enjoy it too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's cool that they have that kind of stuff uh, for kids to be able to do. Um, because back, you know, when I was younger, that was always kind of frowned upon to be a nerd, or, but now it's... Who cares? They there's enjoy a, it. There's a few high-profile celebrities who are really yes, into that sort there's of thing. Yes, there's a whole voice acting community that is very into it, and they're, yeah. they're one of the biggest live streams uh, around. Yeah, isn't it? Like Joe Manganiello, is that his yeah, name? Yeah, I believe he, so. He's big into Dungeons and & Dragons, and there's a couple other people where you're like, oh, wow, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, one of my favorites is, like, I play Magic the Gathering, which is a card game, mm -hmm. and that was also known for, you know, nerds but post malone is a huge advocate of magic the gathering wow so it's cool to see all these celebrities you know that have grown up in this age that 
you know, play those kind of games and stuff. Yeah. Uh, one thing we want to talk about before we wrap up for the for this episode, uh, even though it's a couple months away, uh, we have an annual camp, if you will, here at ON TV. Uh, it's a week-long camp uh, where fifth graders meet for a few hours every day. They learn how to operate all of the video equipment uh, that we use here in the studio. And the goal at the end of the week is to produce a show, kind of a, usually it's a sketch comedy show we do here in the studio. And it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite things I look forward to uh, every year. We usually get eight or 10 or 12 students in for the week. Uh, if you know a young person, fifth grader, who's interested in attending the camp, make sure you let us know. Uh, here's a little promo that was put together to give you some more information about this year's uh, kids video camp. So as you can see from those clips, that's a lot of fun. And the great thing about these kids is when they come in and they see all this gear, they are not intimidated. Where adults look mm -hmm. at our control room and they see the lights and buttons and they go, oh, I don't know if this is for me. The kids are like, oh, I'm going to have some fun with this. Mm -hmm. And they really enjoy it. And they're so creative. And we sit down and pitch ideas for sketches for the final project. Uh, I don't know if we've ever done the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this green screen technology. When they when they see what you can do with the green screen, their minds just run wild. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, we try to schedule it right when the school year comes to an end so that they're still in that learning classroom uh, frame of mind. <laughs> uh, I don't want them to get too comfortable at home and then have yeah. to come back into a learning environment. So right after the school year comes to an end, we have about a dozen kids come through our week-long camp here, and it's a lot of fun. And uh, So if you know anyone who might be interested, give us a call, the number that you saw on the screen, and uh, we'd love to have your fifth grader come join us this year. Yeah. It's always a fun time. It's cool to see what their final project turns out to be. Um, and just, you know, like you said, the creativity. Like, we're both kind of kids at heart, so <laughs> we can kind of get behind some of the stuff that they're talking about. But some of the things they come up with are crazy. Yeah, and I encourage them to bring in uh, props and costumes and anything they might have at home that might inspire us uh, to come up with some ideas and skits and stuff like that. So uh, it's it's a good time. And then everything wraps up with a pizza party uh, on Friday, and we view the final project, and everyone gets a copy that they can take home, and we put it on YouTube. And one, one cool thing to come out of this is I run into these kids all <laughs> the time. I'll be mm -hmm. out and about in the community, and, and uh, I had a... I had a mom, as a matter of fact, I just ran into a mom. I went to a, a, a strategic planning meeting at the library, and as I was leaving, this mom was walking out with me, and she said, you know, my daughter is on the side of your ONTV van. <laughs> and I said, well, that must be pretty cool for her. And she said, yeah, she loves it, but she really, really loved the class. She mm -hmm. went through the, the kids' video camp, and she still talks about it today, and uh, it's really neat running into them in the community, and they tell me how much fun they had. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess with that, we're going to wrap up this episode of Orion Today. Joey, thanks for sitting of in course. with me. Of course. In two weeks on the next episode will be the week of the NFL draft. All right. So that's a big big deal around here in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm excited about next season. Yeah. It, it's been a while since I've been excited about a Lions season, but I'm excited. And that's basically the kickoff. Yeah. of the, the season, basically. Yeah, so that'll have, give us something to talk about in two weeks. So we will see you live on ONTV in uh, two weeks. Uh, until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.